So hopefully by now you've seen some other videos about the parts that we're going to cover next. Flagella, cilia, the centrioles. So we're going to just make our way up in this note packet and move up to flagella at the top of the page. Now the flagella, the cilia, the centrioles, and the cytoskeletons we've already talked about in the previous lecture, they're kind of underneath this heading um, of transport. So we need these structures to transport cells or to transport um, substances throughout an organism. A flagella is going to look like a long tail. Sometimes they will see cells that have one flagella. Sometimes cells can have multiple flagellas. Sometimes they can have them on both sides. But that flagella is kind of like a tail-like structure that will whip back and forth and it helps to move these single cells around in a watery environment. So they help single cells move. Another external cell part that's going to help the cells move are the cilia. So just going up a page or going back a page. As you see here, we have a cilia. This is a paramecium. And it's using its cilia to move. Cilia are much shorter and they're more numerous than a flagella. So again, they help single cells move. And then in the video, hopefully you saw how cilia on cells can help um, these organisms eat or acquire food. The cilia will flutter and will draw in particles um, into the organism. Now multicellular organisms aren't going to use ciliated cells to move cells. Your cells are usually anchored and stay in one place. But in this situation, we're going to use ciliated cells to move a substance such as mucus. You produce about a liter of mucus a day and you swallow it and that mucus is there to help protect you because you're breathing in particles all the time. Dirt particles, viruses, spores, um, dead skin cells from other people and you need to get those out of your lungs. So the particles come in and they get trapped in the mucus but then the ciliated cells move back and forth and that will drive the mucus to move up into the back of your throat where you're going to swallow it. So it helps multicellular organisms move substances like your mucus up your trachea. Also, this is how eggs are able to move down the fallopian tube. The eggs themselves don't, can't move, but the cells that line the tubes are ciliated and the fluttering of those cilia will allow those eggs to move down on the fallopian tubes. Again, they're going to be more um, numerous and they're going to be more, um, they're going to be short and hair-like, unlike that flagella is a longer tail. And you only have a few of them, or one. Moving on up, centrioles are going to come um, up again in December when we're talking about cell division. Here are the centrioles. You have two pairs of them. And centrioles get busy when it's time for the cell to divide and they don't really do anything until it's time for the cell to divide. We can see here that the centrioles will move to opposite sides of the cell and then we've already mentioned these rod-like beams, those are the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm shoots out from those centrioles and it grabs onto the DNA, the chromosomes. And so now our chromosomes can get pushed and pulled around because pretty soon the cell is going to split so we have to move DNA to both sides of the cell so the cell can divide. So we say that centrioles are going to assist in cell division. So centrioles use the cytoskeleton to help the cell divide. Now that we've covered such a large number of cell parts, then I want to go to the very last few pages there and we're going to find that animal cell diagram. There's a plant cell. We're going to move down to this animal cell that we've diagrammed before. And I've zoomed out here so it's a little bit easier to talk about and label these different cell parts. So let's go through um, what we've talked about so far. Since we have an animal cell, that outermost structure is not the cell wall. Animal cells lack cell walls. So that would be the plasma membrane. In there. Pla plasma membrane, which can also be called the cell membrane, 
these beams that crisscross all over the place to give the cell some support and structure. That would be the cytoskeleton. A lysosome is usually shown as a small little circular organelle with stuff inside of it. And those are those digestive or hydrolytic enzymes. So this would be the lysosome. Now the Golgi is going to look like disconnected stacks of um, pancakes. So we've got the Golgi. You can call it the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus or even a Golgi complex or just the Golgi. The centrioles kind of look like cylinders. They look like uh, an oatmeal container. So that's going to be the centrioles, and they're only going to start to move and get busy whenever it's time for this cell to divide. We have tubes with dots on it, so that's going to be our rough ER. Now, we haven't talked about the, the vacuoles yet. The vacuoles are kind of a storage organelle, and animals have small vacuoles, whereas a plant has a large central vacuole. So let's go ahead and label it while we're here, and we're going to talk more about vacuoles in a little bit. We have dots that are unattached or free, and then we have dots on the rough ER. So these would be your ribosomes, free and attached. Then we have this large central structure in the cell. That's going to be the nucleus that encloses and protects the DNA. This is a repeat, so we don't have to put anything on this line. This is pointing to the rough ER again. And then this is going to be your smooth ER. Again interconnected tube that is not covered in ribosomes. This would be point to the cytoplasm. And then though we haven't talked about it yet, let's go ahead and label it while we're here. And we're going to cover mitochondria and chloroplasts together in a few class periods. That would be the mitochondria because it looks like it has a maze in there. Now I'm going to add a few other features because we know that animal cells, like the ones you just saw, some of them have short little hair-like structures. So let's put those on there and indicate that would be the cilia. And then we also see some that have a long tail. So maybe we can kind of put a long tail-like structure here. And that would be a flagella. Now the only type of animal cell that's going to have a flagella is going to be a sperm cell. There's no other cells um, of a multicellular organism that has a flagella. So only sperm cells are flagellated or have flagella. Remember, we can tell this is an animal cell because it's usually drawn as a circle. We're going to see the plant cells are generally more square. You'll see that in our lab that we do. Also, some things that um, we, or as we mentioned here, that I don't want you to think all animal cells are going to have cilia and flagella. Some types of animal cells do. Some have flagella and some have cilia. Now, we're going to come back and we'll fill in the second bullet here after we cover a few more details.